moving forward and just wait for the government to do everything for us. It must not be. It is proper that we must continue to be reminded of all the proper ways on how to handle this situation in order to survive and overcome these challenges. This webinar is not just a requirement for Brigade Escuela 2020, but most importantly, part of our recovery program in order to continue moving forward. So sit back and relax while you actively engage with our speaker for this afternoon. May we be able to grab some in our learnings in life and use in our daily journey. Once again, good afternoon and thank you in advance for your engagement. God bless us all. Once again, thank you for the welcome remark, sir. So now to introduce our speaker, Michael and sir, Mrs. Jessica A. Kalisaga. Sorry, Mart, wala kang sound. Hello po. Hello? Wala ba na po ang sound, sir? Sir Raymart, wala I'm Jessica. Wala kang audio. Can you... Ma'am Jessica, narinig niya ako? Okay. Yes. Apo. Can you hear me? Yes, Ma'am Jess. Okay. To Mr. Amor P. Dugay, our dearest principal, to my fellow department head, to all our teachers there and our participants who are present virtually, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, updated po ba tayo ngayon? According to our Department of Health case bulletin, yesterday we reached 70,764 total positive COVID cases. And even yung mga UP experts natin, they said that we may reach up to 85,000 at the end of this month. This kind of news, siguro even the government health protocols, yung mga naririnig natin na katrabaho natin na may sakit, diba? this may all alarm alarm us and somehow make us feel anxious. Are we perfect? Even our love from this anti enemy. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is with special excitement that I am pleased to introduce to you our research speaker. Dr. Kresa Juven Ligaya. You know, Dr. Kresa has been a rehabilitation medicine fellow doctor in Philippine General Hospital. She was a former chemist instructor in UP Manila and Manila Doctors College in Pasay. Also, she is a resource speaker for various events related to rehab patients and people with disability, sponsored by, uh, likewise, uh, sponsored by TESDA, Northfield Philippines, and UNICEF. Currently, she is an active technical consultant for rehabilitation for physicians for Peace Philippines, a non stock non-profit, non-government organization. And through this, she is able to work with many other NGOs, non-government or, uh, organizations. And one of these is PGH. Moreover, she is an active volunteer doctor for the healthcare access team for the deaf on COVID-19. Though we may be full of anxieties, thank the Lord that this afternoon we will be helped by our competent resource speaker. And it is my honor to introduce her to you again, Dr. Kreza Juven G. Ligaya. Good afternoon, ma'am. Mm -mm. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. 
can every can any can all the people hear me? Yes, doctora. Malinaw naman, sorry. Yes, po, doctora. Yes, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, I am Dr. Cres Alicaya, a rehab specialist. And uh, good afternoon. I'm sorry for I, I'm having some technical difficulties uh, within this day. So hopefully, throughout this um, talk, there will uh, no further problems. Okay, and maybe we can start now. Yes, Dr. Da. Can, can we present the PowerPoint? Naka-present na po. Ah, naka-share na. Okay. Sorry, um, how will I be able to see that? Diyan po sa streaming natin. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, good afternoon. So, basically, throughout um, the whole quarantine period, we have been bombarded with the, so many information, evolving information about COVID-19. So, for this afternoon, I will be just tackling about the very important um, information about coronavirus, the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, SARS virus, um, so that um, we will be able to know uh, kung ano yung kalaban natin and how we will be able to protect ourselves. So, next slide, please. Thank you. So, this, is, so just, this will just be my outline. I'll just be giving a short introduction and then the discussion on COVID-19 and a short conclusion. Next, please. So this is just a short tabulation differentiating between a viral and a bacterial infection. So on the blue column, viral infection. So basically a virus is any small microscopic um, uh, organism or small microscopic, um, a small microscopic material wherein this one, um, it contains a DNA or an RNA and it's an enveloped in a, usually in a lipid with a, many protein satellites outside. So the um, difference ito with the bacteria is that the bacteria is, is an organism that could exist outside or inside of the body. You know, and it is very specific uh, most of the time to uh, a specific, um, it attaches itself to specific um, uh, protein uh, of the cell or recognizes particular um, organism, organs, so that it could infect it. So both of it are uh, contagious. But viruses are more contagious than your bacteria. So can this be treated with an antibiotic? So since virus ito, definitely it cannot be treated by an antibiotic. So treatment for that one is an antiviral. And for your bacteria, of course, an antibiotic. So basically there are some bacteria that could exist on us or within us, but it will not cause an infection kasi yun na tinatawag natin na uh, good bacteria. But however, if this good bacteria um, nag-traverse siya ng ibang um, area na, na, napunta na siya sa ibang area wherein it is not needed, that is the time that it will cause an infection. So next slide, please. So as you have heard, no, since the time of quarantine or since the time na nag, uh, karoon, sumikat yung coronavirus, um, lagi yung naririnig na bakit walang gamot na specific for the viral infection. Most of the time, sinasabi nila there is a cocktail of medication. Some uh, of the doctors would provide different um, medications such as mixture of antivirus, um, DMARDs, or antibacteria. Some would give vitamins, some would advise steroids, you know. But basically, dun nga sa first slide natin kanina, since a virus infects, uh, affects um, any part of the body, you know, systemic effect niya, sorry, um, ang nangyayari is that um, once you are infected with the virus, ang naliging uh, usual presentation mo is uh, body, body pain, pagod ka, no? and then you have fever. Aside from, uh, bukod pa doon sa nagkakaroon ka ng, for example, sore throat, 
no? So, unlike naman sa bacteria, kapag alamba na sore throat ka because of a bacterial infection, pwede ka magka-fever, nagkakaroon ka ng pain or itchiness sa throat mo, but it doesn't cause you to have um, pain on your other body parts. So, because ang um, viral infection is systemic, so basically, ang kailangan natin is to boost the immune system of a patient. So, kaya sinasabi nila, supportive management lang pagdating sa viral infection. So, lagi nire-reseta or ina-advise sa atin ng mga doctors natin or mga kaibigan, adequate amount of sleep or rest, increase oral fluid intake, and vitamins. So, you sleep and rest kasi it is very important dahil um, it allows the body to recuperate do sa time na nagkakaroon tayo ng panghihina. So, binababa nito yung basal metabolic rate, basal metabolic rate so that mas ma-provide na katawan natin yung uh, much needed energy into the formation or strengthening further of the immune system. Yung sa vitamins and minerals, mas maganda kung natural yung ating mapagpupunan. For example, the fruits and vegetables. No? However, since yung recent age natin, kung saan hindi masyadong available sa kapagkainan ang fruits and vegetables, kaya mas nagiging uso or available yung mga multivitamins in a tablet or in capsules. So sometimes you're also um, advised to take antihistamines so that um, hindi masyadong nagwawala or para makontrol yung overreactive na Im uh, immune system natin. So basically, yung may mga antihistamines tayo na nakakaantok or yung drowsy and there are those that are non-drowsy. So kung mapapansin niyo, kung halimbawa, di ba lahat naman tayo nagkaroon na ng uh, trangkaso before, kung hindi tayo nakabili ng gamot, basta nakatulog ka at least the whole day, no? almost tulog tayo or pahinga tayo the whole day, mapapansin naman natin na the following day, we feel much better. So basically, the much needed rest, the adequate amount of fluid intake, and the, the um, yung ayos na pagkain natin will help us already to recuperate. So kung papipiliin tayo sa pag-inom ng antihistamines, mas maganda kung makakahaluan natin ito ng pagtulog. However, dahil busy nga lahat ng tao, we cannot afford to be absent from work. Kaya nagkaroon ng formulation ng antihistamines na non-drowsy. But basically, sleep is one of the best uh, medication for um, viral infection. Adequate rest. Next ko. So yun nga sabi ko, so viral infection, it will respond to antiviral medications. But um, minsan, kahit wala kang inumay na antiviral um, medication, spontaneous nagre-resolve naman yung viral infection mo. Mas mapapabilis lang yung resolution ng infection, ng infection na ito kapag nabigyan tayo ng tamang um, antiviral infection. Kasi minsan yung isip natin na mas malaking time yung nawe-waste kung mas mahaba yung panahon na tayo ay uh, absent sa trabaho. So... Um, minsan naririnig din sa balita na nagtatry sila magbigay na ng antibiotics for COVID-19. So bakit sila nagbibigay? Most of the time kasi yung mga merong severe cases ng COVID-19 are those of uh, my weaker immune system. So sila yung mga may uh, other risk factors such as uncontrolled diabetes, pangit or uncontrolled na hypertension, dyslipidemia. Sila din yung mga weaker talagang immune system such as those na probably may HIV or um, meron cancer. So dahil generally speaking, mahina na immune system nila, any virus na pumasok sa katawan nila, lalo mapapahina yung katawan nila. So hindi na kayang i-fight off ng body nila yung virus na meron sila. So dahil mahina na yung katawan nila or mahina na immune system, na pababa pa ng viral infection. So, mas madali na sila ngayon uh, matalo ng simpleng bacterial infection na po pwedeng nasa loob na ng katawan nila or po pwedeng nahihina nila from the, from the environment. That's why, um, based assessment ng doktor na tumitingin sa inyo, an antibiotic may be given even for a viral infection. Next slide, please. So, yung una, dinis-discuss natin yung medication. Ngayon, di ba napabalitaan natin that um, every country now, or most of the countries, um, are uh, racing against the development of a, paunan siya sa pag-develop ng vaccine against COVID-19. So talagang a very effective ang COVID, ang uh, vaccine, sorry. No? This, this uh, picture shows to us 
na from years ago, decades ago, na talagang with the ad, with the use of uh, with the invention of vaccine, talaga nakaroon ng decrease in the rate of infection sa mga tao. So dahil jaan, um, any any disease na merong vaccine na prepared, if you have that vaccine, it will give you um, very good um, fighting chance na hindi ka makakaroon ng sakit or kung magkasakit ka man ng sakit na yon hindi ka makakaroon ng pinakapangit na epekto ng sakit na yon Just for example, di ba, lately from 2018 to 2017, nakakaroon tayo ng resurgence ng mga um, common um, viral infections na dati na control na tas nagiging epidemia sa atin. No? We have the measles um, epidemic and then we have the resurgence of polio, uh, polio infection. So those two events are very sad for the health department kasi na-control na sila dati. However, dahil natakot ng mga tao from taking vaccines for their kids, nagkaroon tayo ngayon ng mataas na um, chance sa mga sakit na yun, yung mga bata. So for, let's take for example, uh, measles. No? Yung measles, kahit naman may bakuna yung mga bata, pero pa rin mga nakakaroon ng measles habang lumalaki sila. Eh, hindi ibig sabihin na nun, hindi effective yung vaccine. Effective yung vaccine kasi nagkaroon lang siya nung simple case ng measles. No? Hindi, na, hindi tayo nagkaroon ng um, yung bad effect ng measles wherein it could affect the brain that could cause the patient to either be debilitated for years or pamatay. So definitely, vaccine is a must. That's why everybody or most of the countries are racing to develop the first vaccine for COVID-19. Next slide, please. So, kung mapapansin natin, yung mga diniscuss ko kanina are all for medications or for vaccines that could fight the infection once you have it. So, paano yan? Ngayon, wala pa rin naman tayong gamot. No? Cocktail pa rin yung binibigay na gamot for patients. Wala pa rin tayong bakuna. Kaya nga, di ba sabi ni President Duterte, as long as there's no vaccine, he will not allow face-to-face -face, um, classes. So, lahat as much as possible through the internet. So, anong gagawin natin kung wala pa tayong gamot, wala pa tayong vaccine? Papatalo na lang ba tayo? Let's, uh, next slide, please. So, ang pinakamalaking uh, magagawa natin for now is to prevent the entrance of this virus into our system. So, dahil um, hindi natin alam kung paano magre-respond ang katawan natin sa sakit na ito, bata, matanda, walang sakit na comorbidities, so mga diabetes, hypertension, or meron man, iba-iba ng fighting chance towards uh, or against COVID-19 or against SARS-CoV-2. So, kailangan, bago para tayo mga problema tungkol dun sa gamot at sa bakuna, unahin natin siguraduhin na walang makakapasok na infection sa atin. Next slide, please. So, um, let's now discuss about COVID-19 and the things that we really need to know. Next slide. So, this one is such a slightly a busy chart, but... Um, it differentiates, ano ba ibig sabihin ng COVID-19 at ng SARS-CoV-2? Are they the same? So yung COVID-19 or Coronavirus Disease 2019 is yung sakit na meron tayo ngayon. Or, meron or sikat sa panahon na ito. So it's a respiratory illness responsible for the pandemic. The SARS-CoV-2 or the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, Coronavirus 2, is the infective agent causing COVID-19. So the SARS-CoV-2, sabi nga, it is a, um, an RNA virus. Ibig sabihin, RNA gene yung laman niya sa loob and it is enveloped by a lipid envelope and dun sa envelope na yun, meron siya mga spikes na proteins. So if it is enveloped by lipids, no, it can be easily destroyed by soap and water and alcohol. So lately, di ba, may mga 232 doctors na nagsasabi na the transmission of COVID or of SARS-CoV-2 now is um, through respiratory droplets. So nung una sila sabi nila, ah, nung una sila sabi droplets, ngayon inaano nila is airborne na siya. So whether it is droplets or airborne, ano ba ang pinakapapasukan pa rin niya? 
no? Ang papasukan pa rin natin ang unang virus na ito ay through the respiratory system. Yun pa rin yung easiest way for this virus to enter into our system. So yung droplets or airborne, it just depends kasi on the size of the particles as it exits from a person who is infected with uh, this disease. So, don't tayo. Next slide, please. So, recently, may mga researches, kasi di ba nagkakaroon sila ng sinasabi na lahat pati services, surfaces kailangan malinis. No? There had been researches uh, on different materials, kung kaano daw baka tagal na survive yung virus na to on different materials. So, on air, suspended siya, maximum of three hours daw. So that is if the air or if the area is um, closed area, tapos ang temperature is about mga 23 degrees Celsius. So technically sa Pilipinas, bihira mangyari yung 23 degrees. Ano. Pero maraming kulog ang area sa atin. So yung mga copper materials naman, if a virus or if a droplet um, lands on a copper material, so yung mga wala na yata tayong bariya na copper ngayon. Ano? Or any material, for example, yung sa mga knobs. So, ang mangyayari niyan, maximum of four hours na pa pwede silang magstay doon if left um, untouched or unclean yung area na yun. Cardboard, no, yung mga boxes, yung mga nagpapadeliver tayo, maximum of 24 hours siya nagsasurvive sa area na yan if remain unclean. For stainless steel, it could um, stay a maximum of two to three days. And polypropylene plastics, yung mga monoblock chairs, yan. No, yung mga topperwares natin, no, maximum of three days. Next slide, please. So there is a study conducted by a uh, uh, set of pediatricians from Australia. And they had this question, should I be worried about carrying the virus that causes COVID-19 home on my clothes? Kasi di ba para naging uso yung mga PPEs even for ordinary people. So should we be worry, worried? Sabi dito, on cloth, the viral load decreases a hundredfold after 30 minutes. No? So after 30 minutes, hindi na sila detect, uh, bumababa na sila and they're not detectable by day two. Kapag naman sa regular printed paper or tissue papers, they could exist up to maximum of three hours. For furnitures, not treated uh, woods, maximum of two days. Tapos other surfaces such as yung pera, no, glasses, maximum of two days also. So, pero sinusupport din niya yung mga naunang mga statement. So, with this one, next slide po. If we know that maximum of 30 minutes, parang very negligible na sa damit natin. For those people na hindi naman nagtatrabaho sa high-dense area or do sa mga centers kung saan marami COVID cases, you may opt not to wear your uh, special PPE sa mga binibenta ngayon. No? Um, as long as um, you have a limited exposure to other people or if ever pupunta tayo sa schools kasi di Diba, meron kayo mga chances pa rin na pupunta sa schools or magta-travel kayo outside your home, no? You could just wear your regular clothes, pero before you enter your house, you can opt to remove that one or go directly to your comfort room. So for some who are working in clinics, in hospitals, or in very dense areas, like for example, may mga mag-anak kayo na nagtatrabaho, for example, sa LRT, MRT, na hindi talaga may iwasan yung high density of people, they will really have to have a different set of clothes for working and different set of clothes also when they go home. So for safety purposes. Next slide, please. So with this one, we have to ponder now. If the virus can survive only for such a time, you know, is it okay for us not to clean those areas very often? So of course, the answer is no. So from this slide, sorry, sige, yung slide na may pictures pa. So from this slide, we can see now yung those marked in orange are those na madaming viral load. So yan yung tinatawag nating high traffic for viruses or bacteria. So kahit na sabihin na natin na made of copper yon or made of a cloth, no breathable cloth, um, still nakakaroon pa rin sila ng viral load 
nata-transfer pa rin natin from one place to another. So, as often as possible, we really have to clean everything. On the lower right side of this picture, you will see that uh, frequently touched areas such as the face of our part of your partners, no, or yung sa mga bata, no. That's the time na napapasa natin yung infection uh, in a discreet way. Okay, next slide. So nakakontaminate yung mga materials na yon when there is this one person who has an infection. No, kung nari makatilang yung lalabuna niya, sa sabi niya. Ano lang to? Um, Naulan na lang ako kahapon, usually gano'n. You know. So, minsan, baka mamaya nagpapaumpisa na yon na uh, senyales na meron tayo ng infection. So, umubo siya. Pag-ubo, depende sa lakas ng pag-ubo niya or gaano siya kadalas umubo, no, po pwede yon na lumilipad na yung mga droplets do, doon sa hangin at yung iba naman naglalant na doon sa ibang mga gamit sa bahay. So, the top portion of this uh, photos uh, tells uh, shows us kung saan yung mga droplets, respiratory droplets, na micro droplets na nasa hangin, kung pwede ma-inhale na mga kamag-anak natin. Kung sino sa mga kamag-anak natin na nakatira sa bahay ang puyat lagi, sobrang stress, no? yun yung mga bumababa ang immune system for a time, or talagang may ibang mga sakit, sila yung at a higher risk to get the infection. Yung iba naman, halimbawa, may mga batang malilikot, hawak dito, hawak doon sa mga gamit, na po pwede rin nila makuha yung mga, sakit, yung mga um, droplets na yan from those contaminated objects. Or minsan, halimbawa, si nanay na, na pumulot ng isang laruan, baka naubuhan, kung naiabot sa anak, kala malinis, so that could also be an indirect transmission of the infection. Next slide, please. So we all know this already that um, symptoms na hinahanap natin is yung may ubo, nangangate or masakit ang lalabunan, so masakit ang ulo, naglalagnat, may iba may mga muscle pains or joint pains. So there are some small population of children who presents with um, discoloration ng paa, no? yun yung sinyali sila na meron silang COVID na pala. There are some na meron naman repeated mouth sores daw. Those were the um, latest um, discovery of some of the doctors na napapasin nila na common dun sa iba nila mga patients abroad. So, we all know all of these um, symptoms. So, kailangan mas maging vigilant tayo. Next slide, please. So, ito review lang to no ano natin, classification of COVID cases. So, wala na tayong PUI, PUM, ano? It's now replaced by suspect, probable, or, or confirmed cases. Isa kang suspect for COVID-19, if bigla ka nagkasakit ng walang dahilan, tapos yung sakit mo yun, kailangan kang hospital. Minsan, kapag yung mga pasyente na titignan ko ngayon, bigla na sa stroke, nag uh, in sa puso, um, kahit na parang wala siyang relasyon for COVID-19, uh, we still order a swab test for these patients so that uh, the doctors will be assured na hindi namin sila mamimix with other patients. No? Or po pwede may simptobas na may ubo, nilalagnat, tapos uh, ano mo, na, uh, may exposure ka do sa mga areas na po pwede kang makakuha ng COVID-19 in the last two weeks. Or po pwede may simptobas ka, tapos ikaw ay either batang-bata o edad mo above 60 years old or may ibang mga sakit. So, yun yung mga tiyataw natin suspect. Probable naman kapag nagkaroon na sila ng examination, like for example, uh, inconclusive yung resulta, nagiging inconclusive yung resulta kung swab, uh, uh, to call this one, the rapid test lang yung ginamit. No? Or naka, nagkaroon ng uh, swab test pero hindi galing yung resulta sa isang accredited na laboratory. So confirmed ang case kung may sintomas na swab test at positive yung uh, swab test or the RT-PCR result. Tapos ang, ang RT-PCR test na ito ay ginawa sa DOH certified laboratory facilities. Next slide. So this one is a short... Uh, Technically, medyo mahabang video, but I want you to watch this one so that we will understand how the disease is transferred. Hi, 
The team will track particles in the air using laser beams and a high sensitivity camera. This technology allows us to detect droplets as small as 0.1 micrometers wide. The experiment starts. Sneezing. We can see a large droplet, about one millimeter in diameter. It quickly falls. But let's look through the high sensitivity camera. We can see small particles that seem to glitter floating through the air. These particles are all smaller than 10 micrometers or one one hundredth of a millimeter in diameter. Let's take a look in a different angle. They're small and light. You can see them drifting through the air. These are micro droplets. We're learning that sneezing isn't the only source of these droplets. We ran the same experiment on a close-range conversation. People generate a lot of micro droplets when they talk loudly. The droplets between these two stay where they are. They don't drift away. It's not yet known what volume of micro droplets leads to infection. But Tatada says we can't rule out the possibility that micro droplets have spread the virus to some extent. The risk of infection through micro droplets becomes even greater in a closed space with poor ventilation. The lab is simulating the movement of micro droplets in an airtight room. About 10 people in an enclosed space the size of a classroom. A person coughs once and spreads about 100,000 droplets. Large droplets are shown in blue and green. Most of these fall to the ground within one minute. But the micro droplets shown in red continue to drift. This simulation uses only micro droplets. Five minutes later, 10 minutes later, twenty minutes later, the micro droplets are still floating in place. But there is a way to prevent this stagnation of micro droplets. Opening windows and increasing air circulation is believed to be effective. When you open a window, micro droplets are quickly swept away. They're very small and light, so any airflow will get rid of them.
できればですね2箇所空けて風の流れを作ってあげるということが大事それがまあ1時間に1回でもいいからそういうようなことをやることによって感染のリスクというのはかなり下げることができるようになるんじゃないかなというふうに思います。Okay, so hopefully that six minute video is、um, a good explanation already for the visual、uh, message that DOH and other doctors are advising each one of us to do. No, we are ordered to wear our mask properly, to not go out unless necessary, and also to、um, observe physical distancing at least one meter from the next person. Next slide, please. So,、um, DOH,、uh, together with the World Health Organization,、um, identified that these three、um, events will really cause,、uh, if these three things are、um, present in a, in a single event,、um, that will cause a person who,、uh, who is in there to be at very high risk of having the disease. So, your first circle is if a person is in a crowded place. Second is if a person is in with close contact setting. And third is if a person is confined, is in a confined and enclosed space. The Venn diagram on the left lower corner of this、um, slide uh, shows us the、um, uh, fusion of the three、um, diagrams. Where in, kapag yan tatlong yan present, you really have a higher risk of getting the disease. So as much as possible,、um, Kung may at least isa dyan na present, observe the other、um, settings properly, such as distancing, limit yung exposure mo dun sa area na yun, less than five minutes ka lang dapat sa loob, and then go out already. So kailangan ngayon, mas mindful tayo of where we go, what we do, and how we act. Next slide, please. This one is another video which shows to us the importance of wearing your mask properly and observing physical distance. Please watch. From blue polos to blue lab coats and gloves, we headed down to Sacred Hearts Laboratory to unmask a common question What exactly does a mask do? So we teamed up with the hospital's microbiology director, Dr. Rich Davis. This one will be no mask. It's a demonstration of where respiratory droplets go and how they're easy they are to transmit and how a mask is effective at blocking those. That's really the key takeaway. Here's how this demonstration worked I had a petri dish in front of my face as if it's another person's face. Then, with and without a mask, I talked. Hey, how you doing? Saying, Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. Coughed <coughs> and sneezed. <laughs> We also tried coughing with and without a mask from two feet away, four feet away, and six feet away. Dr. Davis put the dishes in an incubator and we waited 24 hours for our results. So these are the plates that you were interacting with yesterday with or without a mask. Let's start with the face to face demonstration. Mask on the left, no mask on the right. Let's go with talking first. With a mask? Oh, that looks good. Talking without a. Oh, okay. I'm actually shocked there's any at all. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Next up. Singing. This、yeah. was Changes by Tupac, and this was Smash Mouth. Things will never be the same, never be the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty similar to talking. But Dr. Davis brought up a good point about one of nightlife's most popular activities. Like karaoke night, when that microphone after the night, I'm sure it's pretty gross and wet. So now we've got coughing. So, so this was just two, two coughs. Really? <laughs> That's crazy. Remember, all those yellow dots, that's where bacteria grew after the droplets out of my mouth landed there. But those droplets were nothing compared to the ones from sneezing. First, mask on. What? Okay, I'm terrified to look at this one. This is no mask. Ooh. Ooh. Good lord. When I had my mask on, no yellow dots. But when I didn't, There was always something. 
But this kind of goes to show is that most of those, you know, heavy fat droplets that are going to come out of your mouth, that are going to have bacteria, they're going to have viruses potentially, you know, they're going to get caught and not go forward into, you know, the space in front. It was the same case for the social distancing demonstration. So yesterday I was standing right here. <coughs> no mask with a mask, four feet. You can see it's less, but still pretty prevalent. Six feet. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just one little, one or two few up there. So there really is that distance difference where the droplets that you're producing by coughing are pretty much, a lot of them are falling out of the air. To me, I think we're coming into a new reality where masks fit into that very social conscious paradigm. You do simple things that everyone can do. It's not going to be 100% effective, but if we all do it, it's going to definitely make a difference in preventing things from spreading one person to another. Hopefully this uh, video is very helpful in many people to understand kung bakit. Uh, most of the doctors are very cautious with the proper wearing of the mask. So when we wear masks, since nga ang transmission either airborne or uh, via droplets is through the a respiratory um, opening through your mouth or through your nose, it's very prudent that to cover your, your nose and your mouth properly. So next slide, please. So this is a picture of how one should uh, wear their surgical mask or whatever face mask that they have. So a surgical mask, if you will notice, may blue and white sides. So sabi nila, yung blue yung sa labas. And on top of that one is merong metal strip that one is meant for your nose. So when you have this kind of mask, so I'll put this one over my face. So you put it over your face first and then you stretch it so that it will cover part of your chin. And then saka nyo pinch over your nose. There are some people who are pinching pero nakaganyan sa ibabaw ng nose. I don't know if you can see it like that. So this one is wrong because you have air pockets here that will allow also the entry of air na pa pwede merong respiratory droplets. So kailangan meron kang seal dyan, okay? Properly sealed. So basically this one, mine medyo malaki siya for me. So there are some people na ginagawa nila, they twist it like this. What happens? lalo lumaki yung opening. So this one is also wrong. So di ba may nauuso ngayon yung tinatawag nilang ear savers? So you can do that one para mas mas stretch yung mask para mas seal properly yung gilid mo. So this one, as you can see, because of the pleats of the mask, no, whenever I talk, yung top portion will not go down and the bottom portion will not go up. And when you remove your mask, you remove it totally like this. I'll show you a diagram also uh, later. Next slide, please. So as much as possible, kung ano mang klaseng mask yung nabili ninyo, if it's an N95 with uh, two straps, no, one on top and one at the bottom. Both straps should be properly worn because those straps were uh, made to form a, uh, what do you call this one? Para maging masil yung edges ng mask over your face. There are some kasi on the news, may kita ba, naka N95 nga, pero ang nakasuot lang na strap is yung nasa ibabaw. Tapos yung strap na isa, naka loosely hanging dito. So it's useless, no? Bumili ka lang isang mahal na bagay, hindi mo na gamit ng tama. So magkakasakit ka pa rin. On the bottom portion of the lady with an N95 is a lady coughing with her mask on. So gaya nga na unang video kanina, even if you cough, you cough through the face mask. There are many people kasi who remove their face mask when they cough kasi I believe the intention is for them to reuse their mask no? para hindi siya mapunuan ng laway. Um, however, when you do that one, again, you are putting the people around you at risk of getting whatever you have. May it be COVID, TB, or other infection. Okay? On the right side of the screen, you will see a printed uh, type of a mask. 
for me, ako, mas magustuhin ko kung gagawa or bibili kayo ng uh, cloth mask, it would be something like that. No, Similar to how I explained with this surgical mask that I have. So that whenever you talk, it the, the top portion will not go down to uncover your nose or the bottom part will not go up to uncover your your chin or my ma spread yung other uh, infection malapit palapit sa bibig natin okay uh, next slide please so these are the typical masks that we see nowadays no yung um parang uh shape na yung mask na yon covering from the nose up to the chin. However, I find this um, mask problematic in a way na kapag nagsalita kasi kung halimbawa na overuse mo na or minsan di ba through time lumulubag din kasi yung character niya sa may time na. Habang nagsasalita din dahil nag, yung jaw mo nag-move up and down when you talk. So because wala siyang pleats, ang tendency ng, na, ng face mask then is to go down also to slide. Lalo na yun nasa ilalim na type of cloth face mask na very narrow. So doon natin nakikita na may mga nakamask na, na tao, no, na kapwa natin Pilipino. Pero yun nga, when they talk or when they just move or nag lang talaga yung sa earpiece na garter, na-expose din yung hindi dapat ma-expose. The, the infographic on the left is um, a panawagan nito na medical city where in they're asking their patients who will be consulting them at their clinics or at the hospital not to go there with a mask na may valve no again the valved mask is technically used for those na um how dito uh walang infection dati no dati recommended din kasi for those na alba masyadong mataas yung um pollution sa area nila na gusto lang natin salain yung papasok Pero wala tayong problema sa pag-exhale. Yung valve na yan kasi is uh, to improve lang the circulation palabas ng hangin. So there is filtering of what's going inside but uh, yung uh, in-exhale natin na hangin, hindi siya na-filter because of the valve yung opening. So for example, I, uh, kung ako may sakit, whatever sakit meron ako, nakagamit ako ng valve, uh, may risk pa rin yung kausap ko na mahawa from me because hindi filtered yung lumalabas from me even if I wear my mask. Next slide, please. So this is just a good infographic telling us na kahit na kaharap mo, no, may infection, as long as you're properly wearing your mask, no, hindi lang basta may mask, even if ubuhan ka niya, you still have a lower chance of getting the infection as compared to the first part wherein both of you do not have mask. So, the so first one, wala kang mask, inubuhan ka, 90% risk of getting the infection. The so second row, there is uh, the infected person coughing, but the one he is talking to is wearing a mask. So, decreased by 60% agad. So, 30% risk lang siya. Pas uh, maganda kung yung may sakit, siya yung nakamask, Kahit walang mask yung kausap niya, kahit umubo yun, may konting particles man na lumabas, it will still be sealed by the surgical mask. So still 5% risk for the person na unmasked. Further decrease if both of them are masked, no? wearing a mask, 1.5%. And as you can see, 0% risk if you observe proper distancing and both of you are wearing your masks properly. So hindi ko na... Um, kaya pang reiterate yung importance natin ng pagsuot ng mask ng maayos at yung pag-observe ng proper distancing. Next slide, please. We commonly see people no, putting down their mask, their face mask, dito sa may ilalim ng mouth nila sa may chin, no? and then later on, ibabalik nila. So that one is very risky. So gaya nga ng previous slide natin kanina, what if someone coughs, di ba? Tapos nakamask ka nga, oh, protected ka at that time. However, the other parts of your face or of your body may have con been contaminated by the droplets of other person. Tapos binaba mo yung mask. So the red portion on the first uh, picture is the infected area. So pagbaba mo, clean yung uh, side ng lo yung loob ng mask, binaba mo, 
So, nagkaroon na ngayon ng uh, contamination. And then, binalik mo siya. So, sinisinghot mo na ulit ngayon yung um, respiratory droplets na most probably infected. So, maybe these are some of the reasons that will explain bakit nagkakaroon ng sakit ng ibang tao at sabihin nila, inobserve ko naman yung mga sinasabi na to wear masks, to wash hands, observe physical distancing, pero nagkasakit pa rin ako. So there are little things na nakakaligtaan natin gawin that causes the infection to get into us. Okay. Tapos, di ba, recently, there had been a heated, um, what to call this one, um, argument in the in the news for in there are many people who are um, against wearing face masks no lalo na meron tayo dito sa atin yung governor ng isang lokalidad na she does not want people or she does not advocate wearing the mask so the next video is very interesting this one is by a surgeon from another country i really do not know where this video came from but this one is shared to me by my friend hopefully this helps us is our anxiety towards yung sinasabi nilang uh, problem with wearing the uh, surgical masks. A public service announcement, if I can, about mask wearing and oxygen saturation. This on my finger records the oxygen saturation of my blood and my heart rate. This top number is the oxygen saturation. Anything between 94 and 100 is completely normal. I have no respiratory conditions, so for me, it sits around 99. The bottom number is my heart rate. Anything above 100 is too fast. And mine is fast because I'm pissed off that I'm having to record this video. Now, I'm going to put a mask on, something that I do routinely, seeing as I work as a surgeon. And I'm going to show you that actually, this oxygen saturation number doesn't change. Masks do not have the ability to reduce your oxygen. That is medically false. Stop making stuff up. Stop listening to people who are making stuff up and stop turning this into a physical issue. Masks help protect you and protect others. If you're told to wear them, do so. Stop being selfish. So with the three sets of videos that I have shown you, hopefully um, this will increase the compliance of people through mm. you as the teachers para ma-educate din natin yung families and yung students natin on how to fight COVID-19. So dahil nga yung una natin problema, we have no medication yet to kill the virus. We have no vaccine yet that will prevent us from having the infection. But we can do many important things that will prevent us from having the disease. So we just have to wear our masks properly. We just have to observe social, uh, social distancing avoid crowded area in a closed um, in a closed space and next slide next slide another slide sir the importance of washing your hands so basically all these things paulit-ulit sinasabi pero parang hindi masyadong tinatanggap ng society is very important. All, uh, all of the people are um, into having the medicine and having the vaccine right away. However, if ever magkaroon na tayo ng vaccine and the medication, um, most probably mahal pa yun. And I don't think all of us will be able to get it agad-agad. So with this very simple, and basic things that we can do to protect ourselves and our families. Hopefully, we can really fight COVID-19 with a very simple way, you know, with very simple ways. So, sabi nga natin kanina, doon sa introduction natin for SARS-CoV-2, it being a RNA virus enveloped in, a lip, in lipid, so basically, washing your hands every, every now and then or using alcohol in the absence of soap and water will really decrease the risk of transmission of this disease. Next slide. So we wash our hands, even, we wash our hands obviously kapag madume. But even if it is visibly clean, we still have to wash our hands because we don't know baka yung huli natin hinawakan. Yung table natin, laptop, your bowels could be containing some of the virus that could cause the uh, spread of infection. Next slide, please. 
So this is just a summary. Next slide. Let's now proceed with the how we will clean uh, general things inside our home. So for the first one is clothing. So what if someone lives in your house na suspect for COVID-19 with mild symptoms or yung mabas ka, um, nag-commute, hindi mo alam kung yun na, na, na upuan mo, na sandalan mo, uh, meron mga respiratory droplets that could be uh, carrying the virus, how will you clean them? So you just treat your clothes such a, like a regular dirty laundry and you, you may wash it naman with other clothes also. But if you opt not to do that one, it's okay. With me, every time I visit the hospital, after I enter the, the house, I go directly to the comfort room. And then I take off my uh, my clothes and then I wash them first with running water. I have to with the uh, color safe bleach. I have to wash them for at least 20 minutes. And then uh, after at least 20 minutes, I change the water, wash again my clothes, and then put detergent onto it. Tapos babad ulit, tapos ako sila kukusutin. So what if somebody living sa bahay ninyo, no, uh, may sakit, uh, ubo ng ubo, or bigla nasuka over their damit, or yung bed sheet, no? how, how will you clean those clothes? Next slide, please. So with that, usually kung may mga vomit or may mga sipon no na na ano hana ko ano mga body fluids you say uh, when you get that one from the room of an infected person make sure that you are wearing your appropriate PPE you wear your mask and you wear your gloves and then you also have a plastic container that will carry the or will contain the dirty laundry of that person put it in a sealed uh, container and then um, go to your wash area Wag mo nang pagpagin, no? Run, run uh, again, uh, t uh, what do you call this one? Check each clothing, kung may mga vomit or whatsoever fluid. Scrape it off and then wash it with running water. Saka mo ibabad with a detergent. So what would, or a disinfectant. So what would be the disinfectant that you could, yeah, that you could uh, concoct? No? Next slide, please. So if you have a 5% uh, chlorine sa bahay, you can make a 1 liter solution of 0.1% chlorine by mixing 2, uh, two teaspoons of your 5% chlorine into 1 liter of uh, water. Or kung ang ano mo, malaki-laking lalagyan, no? pwede naman na, sorry, I cannot read. 100, 100 ml of that 5% chlorine and mix it with 900 ml. Uh, water. You have to change this one every day as much as possible or consume it after you have you are able to make the solution. Kasi the following day, it will not be as effective as the first two. May mga nag, ano na, nag disintegrate na chlorine from that one. Lalo na kung naka-open lang yung container mo. Next slide. <sighs> if the one that you have is a 65% chlorine, so you get one tablespoon of that 65% chlorine and mix it with 20 liters of water. No, or one tablespoon in two liters. So all these solutions, you can use this one para dun sa dirty laundry. Lalo na kung puti, syempre, kasi baka wala yung kulay ng ano natin. Also, you can use this one to disinfect your, um, your floor, your doorknobs, no? and then wash it again with, or wipe it again with, uh, Clean cloth now wet with water. Para lang natin. Next slide. So, sikat ito ngayon, yung mga rubber mats with the chlorine solution or disinfectants. So, with this one, we just have to be um, careful with this. Now, make sure kung you have this one in your home or you have this one in your schools before you enter a specific room, make sure that the rubber mat and the Chlorine solution there or whatever disinfectant you, you have there is frequently replenished. Kasi syempre, nasa labas lang yan, mahangin or mainit. So, nag evaporate din yung ibang mga elements natin or yung mga solutions natin from that one. Baka mamaya basa siya, puro water na lang pala. And make sure that the rubber masks are cleaned also properly at small as possible every day. Kasi syempre, nagiging breeding ground din yun siya for other, um, 
for other bacteria na po pwede mag-grow doon. Okay? So, next slide. So, for those na nag-grocery or going uh, to the market, paano din natin linisin yung mga fruits and vegetables? So, basically, di ba yung sinasabi sa atin, dapat sa labas pala ng bahay, meron tayong container na mag, doon natin ipapatong muna yung lahat ng mga napamamilihan natin. And then, if you have faucet outside your house, well, that's very nice. And then, you can clean na initially doon pa lang yung mga napamili natin. And then, you should have a separate clean container na pwede magpasok or mag-contain ng lahat ng binilhan makapunta sa kusina. I have watched this one video which is very um, good yung advice niya. Ginagawa niya, um, pag na do, pag dumating na for the from the grocery, nililinis sa yung countertop table. And then, nilalagyan niya ng masking tape to divide the tabletop or the kitchen top uh, doon sa dirty, tsaka doon sa clean area. So, lahat ng naipamili niya, naipasok niya, ipapatong niya doon sa may dirty section. Sa kanya, lilinisin isa-isa, tapos ipapatong niya doon sa clean section. Para after wars, pwede niya nang itago doon sa cupboard or sa fridge nila. Okay, next slide po. This one is become, becoming popular now, no, yung paggamit ng ultraviolet lamp. So this one is very useful talaga in killing bacteria, germs, mildews, fungi, lahat na namaisip mo. Because this one really um, disintegrates or damages the DNA or RNA of any organism that could exist microscopi microscopically in that area or in that room. So we use this one really in hospitals so that in between patients, palinis talaga yung kwarto na gagamitin ng bagong pasyente. Uh, there had been questions kung dapat ba maglinis ng kamay using the UV lamp. Of course not. No, syempre, we also are organisms made with DNA, yung bawat cells natin. So if you subject yourself on that one, that will cause some skin problems. And also exposure to your eyes would also give you eye problems. So... Ngayon, um, marami naman ng improved version ng UVC wherein may delayed um, on and uh, may delayed on siya para uh, may time ka pa lumabas ng kwarto bago siya mag-emit ng UV rays niya. Okay, next slide po. So aside from keeping uh, the environment clean and free from virus and bacteria, we also have to take care of our physical body in terms of activity para hindi rin tayo magkaroon ng back pains, uh, shoulder pain, headache, no? Because work from home, meron tayo, hindi yung bahay natin, hindi talaga nakasetup para sa trabaho, eh. Unlike yung table natin sa opisina, talagang ma-observe yung um, uh, proper um, ergonomic. So, dito sa bahay, minsan sa kusin, uh, sa dining table, minsan sa kama, no? So, pangit yung posisyon ng katawan. Uh, kung mapapansin natin, marami mga pasyente ngayon, marami nagkonsulta sa akin during the quarantine season for low back pain, for upper back pain, for headache, for neck pain. Kasi nga, lagi silang nakayoko habang nakatrabaho. Hindi sila masyadong gumagalaw kasi almost the whole day nakaharap lang sa computer because of the uh, meetings after meetings after meetings na online. No? Or yung may mga papers na kailangan isubmit para dahil sa... Uh, may mga trabahong inuwi sa bahay. So, technically, we still need to have regular exercises. Sitting, no? Sabi nga nila, sitting is the new smoking. If you sit for more than two hours ng dere-derecho, hindi ka tumatayo, that will really cause you to have, um, tas araw-araw mo siyang gagawin, that will really accumulate and cause you to have back problems. Papapasin nyo rin siguro during this uh, pandemic, parang sumasakit yung calves ninyo. That's because of um, poor circulation already sa uh, katawan ninyo. No? So, if that's happening, just stand up. Walk around your house. If your house have second floor, go up and down the stairs one or two times para mag-circulate ulit yung dugo, ma-pump up yung heart ninyo, and then you you rest. So, those are simple exercises and activities that you can do. And next slide. During this pandemic, ang mga ayuda na binigay sa tao, noodles, no, canned goods, sardines, no, all filled with preservatives. So, 
The second uh, part here, the blue one, is informing us to cut back on salt. So a maximum of 5 grams or a teaspoon of salt a day lang. So uh, dito, bawat kainin naman kasi natin meron na yung inherent salt content. So we are um, informing the people to cut back on salt. So to limit again the eating of um, processed goods, so you canned goods, uh, noodles, because those are high in salt, that will trigger hypertension. So it's very important that you eat a variety of uh, food, including fruits and vegetables. Next slide. So since COVID um, is a respiratory illness, dapat malala pa rin ng mga tao to protect or to keep their lungs healthy. Mayroon pa rin matitigas ang ulo that could not really resist no, the, uh, the temptation of smoking. So the smoking, kasi diba smoking does not only affect the person smoking. So alam na natin to matagal na. But it also affects other people um, kakasama natin sa bahay. Although hindi tayo directly na uh, exhale ng smoke nila, but the smell of the smoke after they do it could still um, cause detrimental effect to the respiratory system of the patients. As you can uh, sense siguro, may iba, di ba yung mga ma mga may ito, mga smokers minsan lang ubo sila ng ubo kahit uh, wala naman silang ubo talaga it's because parang feeling nila may nakabara sa lalamunan you know? so this one kasi the the particles from smoking paralyzes the cilia of your respiratory tract so yung cilia of your respiratory tract kasi is very important in propelling out the debris of uh what you call this one, yung mga napatay ng immune response natin sa lalamun, or sa baga. So, yung, yung nagiging plema. So, mahalaga yun para ma-cough out natin yung mga uh, nakalusot na pathogens papasok sa ating baga. So, if these are paralyzed, so lalong mahihirapang ilabas yung mga intruders sa respiratory tract natin. So as much as possible, hopefully we can advise our students, our their parents, or yung kasama natin sa bahay to just stop smoking. No? Each stick of uh, cigarette that you smoke um, brings you closer to your ano, to your end. And dami niyang, alam naman, alam naman natin na marami na siyang epekto, di ba? So pinapa tigas na yung blood vessels natin, kaya hypertensive, yung sa stroke, no, cancer and all. Huwag na natin idamay din yung ibang tao. So, let's just stop smoking as much as possible so that we will also lessen our risk of getting COVID-19. Next slide, please. So, what if someone in listening to us is pregnant or has just given birth and is about to breastfeed. Am I allowed to breastfeed or is it okay for me? Na buntis ako tapos mga anak ako baka lalo na kung may covid paano na lang baka mandipat ko siya sa anak ko. So um WHO assured them that uh, as of the moment there has been no observed um fetal maternal transmission of the infection. So even if uh, some mothers are covid-19 uh, positive, uh, the babies turned out to be uh, negative for the infection. Next slide, please. So, kung nanganak na, di ba, sabi dun sa ano, unang yakap, will you prevent the mother to have close contact and have early exclusive breastfeeding for their baby? Of course not. Even if COVID-19 disease, if, even if this disease is very, um, detri or very detrimental or very dangerous, the benefit of having close contact and early exclusive breastfeeding outweighs the harm of the infection. So uh, WHO still um, supports mom to have uh, unang yakap at exclusive breastfeeding. Next slide, please. So if you are to breastfeed or to have close contact with your baby, 
you just have to observe the proper hygiene at them. So um, wash your hands regularly before you hold your, your baby. Wear your mask properly. As much as possible, you have your um, clean mask every time. No? And then um, disinfect all materials na nasa paligid or usually gagamitin natin para sa bata. Next slide. So if a woman with COVID-19 is too unwell to breastfeed, she can still support the baby. So pa pwede mag-expression ng milk, ipainom niya sa bata, or pwede siyang maghingi ng donation ng human milk from other mothers, or pa pwede relaxation. So good thing, buti na lang, even in this pandemic, no, the newborns could still have the exclusive uh, breast milk of their mothers and still enjoy the benefit of close contact. Next slide, please. So one of the vulnerable groups are the persons with disability. So it's very um, sad to see na kahit wala pang COVID, there are the, these people who really have um, poor access to healthcare services. Una, because of the structural barriers na hindi sila makapunta kasi walang magpasakay sa kanila dahil naka-wheelchair sila or may mapapasakay pero mahal lang pamasahe kasi kailangan nakataxi sila exclusively. Or minsan, nandun na sila sa lugar pero hindi sila makaakyat, makapunta doon sa floor kung saan sila dapat magpapatid din. Um, also, the PWDs are those who are very vulnerable because they need to touch so many things. For example, yung mga kapatid natin blind. They have no other choice, no, pag mag-move around sila, lalo na kung bago yung lugar, but to touch, lalo na yung sa elevator, they have to feel the buttons, kung anong floor sila pupunta. They have to hold on to handrails for them to know kung end na ba ng step na yon, kung liliko na ba sila or what. So these are our, um, uh, the Filipino people who are very uh, susceptible to getting the infection. And also, um, they're very difficult to um, observe yung physical distancing because most of them will be needing at least moderate assist or in close physical contact is important. And uh, they are also those people who are having difficulty accessing information. For example, di ba, yung mga deaf natin na kapatid, they can read the man, di ba? they can write. However, Yung syntax ng uh, sign language is very different from the syntax of the written language or the spoken language. So sometimes even if they read, even if they know what some of the words mean, sometimes they just get mis in, uh, they don't get the real message because they do not, uh, they're not able to dive well into the meaning of the sentence. So, lalo na kung hindi nakapag-aral yung deaf, so lalo silang kawawa when it comes to um, getting proper information for lalo na ngayon pandemic. So, um, just to share yung ngayon, um, I am one of the volunteers na for the hotline for the deaf for COVID-19. Um, most of them are just afraid because nakuubo na sila, yun pala hyperacidic lang. No? When, when you explain to them kung ano yung mga nararamdaman nila and what they can do, they are just relieved na hindi pala sila dapat matakot na baka COVID na yung meron sila. So, uh, good thing that also the other organizations such as UNICEF are extending their hands to provide accessible materials for the deaf, for the blind, no? so that they will not be left behind. And for my last slide, So anyone can contract coronavirus, so regardless of race, gender, age, and other personal qualities. We just have to be mindful. No, we really uh, just have to observe the very basic, the very simple things. Kasi uh, kung hindi natin kayang gawin yung mga simpleng bagay ng paghuhugas ng kamay ay maya't maya, pagsuot ng mask ng maayos, pag-observe ng social distancing, talo na tayo. Hindi na natin kayang sundin pa yung mas mahihirap na requirements. Kung dun pa lang sa simple at basic, eh, hindi natin magawa. So hopefully with this uh, talk, I am able to clarify some things and uh, reiterate the, the need talaga for 
uh, the several months na natin naririnig na mga panawagan ng ating mga health workers. Thank you very much. Po ma'am, ay doktora, napaka very informative po. Talaga pong nalaman na namin kung ano po yung proper na paggamit po ng face mask, saka po yung mga pwedeng gamitin para ma-prevent po yung, corona, yung pag-spread po ng coronavirus. No? So naisip ko nga po yung mga, ano nga po yung mga high-tech na uh, dinodonate po sa school, katulad po nung hand-free na thermometer. Mm-mm. So isa pong example yun, hindi na kailangan hawakan o hindi na kailangan lumapit ng guard para itest yung thermometer po ng mga papasok. Bagkos, lalapit yes. na lang po sila doon sa isang uh, aparato na kung saan po, lalapit nila yung ulo nila, then check na po nila agad yung temperature. Then meron na rin po kaming, meron din pong na-provide po na automatic na hand, uh, hand sanitizer dispenser po na kung saan, yes po, hindi na rin kailangan hawakan. It, it, may sensor po siya na kung saan, u- automatic din po mm. nagde-dispense po yung alcohol. Yes. So, for the open forum po, uh, thank you po ulit, doktora. For the open forum, Michael, ma'am, Lady Chris Leonardo, the master teacher of English department. Mm-hmm. Wait lang, ma'am El, sige tayo It was really very ins- Wait lang po. Ma'am Elsie. Okay, ano there na- you go. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I agree with Sir Salva okay, Pinera. Yes, I'm um, good. <laughs> uh, Dr. Eligaya, thank you so much. That was very informative and insightful. Now, if some of our uh, viewers here have some questions about the talk of Dr. Eligaya, you may uh, send a chat or comment on the right side of your screen. It says their talk chat. Then you may write your comment, your questions for Dr. Ligaya. So I believe Sir Salvatiera will show the screen to us so that Dr. Ligaya can see if there are questions or comments posted. Actually, more on thank you po ang nag Oo nga. Thank you from Joan Samosa. Thanks okay, from Eleanor Mermigkis. Thank you from Sir Eli. I think that's Hi. because uh, Dr. Ligaya pretty much covered everything. Oh, thank you from Michelle Lagronio. Opo. Napaka-informative nga po, ma'am. Sobra. And I found myself taking pictures or screenshots of important slides, if it's okay, Doc. Para ma-share ko rin sa iba na Oh, this is the right way of doing things pala. I see Sir Eli Yusof, he has a question. Is copper really, does copper really have disinfectant property as posted on some infographic? Ayan, malaki na siya. May tanong po si Sir Eli. Narinig po po kayo tayo ni Doktora? Doktora? Yes, Sir Chappie. Doktora? Hello? Ay, chap. Ayun po, may, may po tayong first question from Sir Ellie, ma'am. Yes, yes. Uh-oh. 
Doctora, may po tayong first question po from Sir Eli Uso. Ma'am Lady Chris, may po ba ako? Yes, I can hear you, Raymart. Hello, so... Oh, medyo po. Hello? Like, na, nakapasok na ba ako? <laughs> Hello po, Doctora. <laughs> Oo, nawawala-wala ah, kasi okay. internet ko. Ayun ba yung first so, question natin? Yes, yes. Uh, so, is copper really, does copper really have disinfected property as posted on some infographic? So, basically speaking, as we can see naman from from the time, halimbawa, yung doorknobs, no, most of them are in, in copper talaga. I, be, I, I haven't read talaga, no, but, but since I'm a chemistry graduate, maybe this one will, ano, since the copper, um, what you call this one, na nandoon, highly reactive with um with oxygen no it allows so kaya baka no baka nag uh, siya ng oxidizing that causes the bacteria to or the virus to just disintegrate but this was a very good question i really have to look into this one i, I was looking for this answer also is there someone talking I from the background, I suppose. Uh, we... Hello. <laughs> uh, thank you, Doc. Should we proceed to the next one? From Rowena to Doc. Is it safe not to wear a mask when jogging, walking, not in a crowded area, and biking in order to feel comfortable? Is it safe not to wear a mask when jogging, walking? Define natin yung not crowded area. Nasaan ka ba nakatira? Kasi basically, if we are in NCR, um, it would be difficult for us to qualify that an area is not uh, crowded. Now, for your safety and for your peace of mind, I would still suggest that you wear your mask. Um, so yung nakikita ko sa mga kaibigan ko from abroad, they don't wear masks, for example, in Canada, because sobrang layo ng bahay ng mga tao doon sa isa't isa. So, technically, you can really qualify that it is not a crowded area. So, as much as possible, you wear your mask even if um, you exercise. Initially, it would be difficult, no? Actually, it's, um, it's, um, uh, it's still debatable. Many people are still debating that one. But um, for me, uh, you gradually increase your pace, no? You, you know your body. So you just have to increase yung um, activity mo para masanay ulit yung katawan mo with the new environment that you have. From the, what do you call this one, from the video that was uh, shown to you kanina, that the mask will not cause you to have a decrease in oxygen saturation, especially if you are a healthy individual. So since nakaka-exercise, that means that you are healthy. So basically, there should not be any difficulty or problem when it comes to breathing while you work out with your mask on. Um, I had one patient, he, he is um, 75 years old, and he was wearing N95 when he visited me sa clinic. So me as a rehab specialist, we prescribe exercises to patients. So since this is a 75-year-old patient who has been uh, post-stroke for two months, so the condition talaga yung matanda. Um, so when he was wearing his uh, N95 mask, we have the pulse oximeter, the one that monitors the oxygenation level of patients. Um, we were slowly increasing the activity of the patient so that hindi kami bababa less than 90% for him. So whenever this patient is having difficulty, you know, bumababa, nagiging 90% yung auto saturation, we stop. We stop and then we ask the patient to just relax, no, to breathe in. Kung hindi talaga nag improve yung oxygen level, we change the mask from an N95 to a surgical mask. And then nag improve naman yung patient. So for me, my belief, for your safety, 
um, lalo na kung nasa NCR area tayo or in provinces surrounding um, NCR, I would still highly recommend that to wear your face mask and then you just pace your, um, your, your activity. Yung sa tanong mo kasi, even if you don't feel comfortable, so it's just a mindset. So uh, maybe uh, we just have to train ourselves to be with the new normal so that we will be able to um, follow this one. Ako din nung una, it was difficult for me to go up and down the stairs dahil nakapag-aakyat to visit different patients as naka N95 ka. Nakakahingal talaga. No, so initially I was having frequent rests per floors and then later on nag-improve naman yung cardiopulmonary endurance. So ibig sabihin for the longest time ng quarantine period sedentary ako kaya nahihirapan ako huminga. So eventually kaya nang umakyat akyat ng hagdan kahit naka N95 nang hindi nahihinga. So um, comfort kasi is um is just hopefully um matrain, no? Hopefully matrain yung when it comes to finding comfort in fa uh, in wearing the face mask. But if it will save your life, yun na sinasabi ng ibang tao, wearing the face mask for now might be uncomfortable, but it would be more uncomfortable if we are already uh, sick and on the bed. So we don't want that one to happen. It's way, way more uncomfortable kung kailangan mo ng uh, oxygen support, no? lalo na kung um intubate ka na so hopefully hindi tayo babot doon okay po thank you doc then we have another question from Shirley Panelo can covid virus disease spread through food um anything kung poorly prepared could still be a pathogen now it's still it could still be a um, a vector for uh, the disease. No? Uh, kasi kung ang food mo na prepare na poorly ng isang may kunwari, hindi niya alam na may sakit siya and it lands on your food and uh, diniliver sa'yo, no? um, kasi yung food mo dadaan pa rin naman sa oropharynx mo. So, that's a part of your um, um, uh, what do you call this one, of your cavity na sinishare ng respiratory and ng digestive system. So, there could be some that could um, enter into your respiratory system through this. So, may nabasa ako na if you get food no, as much as possible, you decontaminate it by subjecting it into uh, i-heat mo siya ulit, i-reheat mo so that um, you're just sure na you're eating uh, a good food that is also safe for you and your family. Kung nga po, Dok, kasi for, sometimes may mga cravings, ano? Papapadeliver mm -hmm. tayo. Although yun nga, kasi wala pa rin naman talagang, what you call this one, wala pa namang studies confirming or, uh, na, what you call this one, what's the term? Nagde-debunk ng belief na yan na, food will not be a, uh, a vector for the infection. We just have to be careful kasi yun nga, isa lang yung entryway. So, hopefully it will not, uh, hindi tayo masingitan ng infection just because we want to eat something good. Thank you po. Then for the next one from Jessica Altarejos. Doc, if in case nag-positive sa rapid test, should we be alarmed? Then, totoo ba na ang mga nagbe-maintain ang mga nagbe-maintenance ng gamot highly possible na mag-positive sa rapid test? Okay. Sa so rapid testing kasi, um, kailangan muna natin i-qualify bakit nag-rapid test yung patient. If nag-rapid test yung isang asymptomatic patient dahil sa requirements sa trabaho, no? para makapasok sa trabaho, wala siyang nararamdamang sakit, sinunod na yung quarantine protocol, hindi talaga siya lumalabas, nag-wear ng mask talaga na maayos, walang lagnat, walang ubo, tapos mag-rapid mag test na positive must be a false positive. Pero for example, may kakilala or nagpunta sa hospital, nag-rapid test kasi nahihirapan huminga, so something to cause an alarm for that person na pwedeng totoo siya. 
uh, ako kasi no the rapid test is just um uh is is uh, is made kaya nga siya rapid test is to provide rapid result lahat para madaling madelineate ng mga emergency doctors kung sino yung dapat i-isolate na natin agad sino yung hindi mo na, na less probably covid yung sakit niya so for me mas maging ma-alarm tayo if positive tayo for the RT PCR test kasi that one is more sensitive in detecting the viral infection for those naman na nagme-maintenance no um, I, I just forgot, I attended this um, webinar concerning those hypertensive and those with diabetes. There is this um, certain um, uh, protein na elevated kasi because you take in the, this medication. I just forgot what that one is. So, kaya sila nagiging highly susceptible for uh, uh, to get the infection. So, gaya nga nung sinabi ko kanina, if a person is immunocompromised already because of the many um, comorbidities, may high blood, may diabetes, uh, may poor lipid or uh, cholesterol control sa katawan, technically speaking, hirap na yung katawan nila inormalize yung sarili. Dadagdagan no pa ng panibagong problema, which is a virus that easily um, brings down the immune system of a person. Talagang magiging uh, highly susceptible sila. Uh, ako kasi ang paniniwala ko dahil sa dami ng medical um, explanation for every little things, um, I look into it as ano ba yung pinakasimpleng explanation. So dahil marami ka ng problema sa katawan mo, kaya ka nagbe-maintenance na ng gamot kasi ibig sabihin yung katawan mo hindi niya na kayang ibaba yung BP mo sa normal or yung, yung, yung uh, pancreas mo hindi na kayang mag-provide ng insulin para mapababa yung blood sugar level mo, kaya ini-injectionan ka na ng insulin. So, ibig sabihin, yung katawan mo mismo, nahihirapan na siya na gawin kang healthy at a normal uh, occasion. Tapos, nagkasakit ka pa. So, um, parang ubus na, paano ba to? Parang hirap na hirap na siya, dadagdagan mo pa ng problema, talagang mababa na yung reserves niya. So, Maybe that could answer the second question, Jessica. Uh, thank you so much again, Doc. For the next one from Sir Sid Dakil. In the hospital, why is it that a simple cough is suspected as COVID? Then what particular evidence do they have that it is COVID? Uh, uh, kasi nga lahat tayo ngayon ay napaparanoid. You know? So kami lahat, actually ako sa rehab, no, being a doctor na hindi naman directly for infectious patients, Ang tinitreat ko, for example, yung mga na-stroke, no? yung mga napilayan. Minsan, I still look do sa chart nila kung positive for COVID. Kasi nga, uh, there are some, dahil sa may lumalabas na balita na nagkakos ng increase in coagulation ng blood, kaya marami na sa stroke. So, kailangan mo pa rin maging sure, kasi yun na sabi natin do sa mga previous slides kanina, na hindi lahat ng pasyente nag papakita na ubo lang or lagnat or respiratory tract infection. Mage lang ka na? Hi! <laughs> Hi so, so, may iba yun nga, mouth source yung mga pakiramdam nila. So, kaya, do sa tanong ni Sir Sid, um, bakit yung simple cough suspect ka na for COVID? Kasi nga, everybody is just paranoid to catch kung ito ba ay cough dahil sa COVID or cough dahil sa ibang sakit. So, gaya nga nung nakwento ko dun sa second to the last slide ko with the deaf uh, patients, uh, most of them nagreklamo sila na may cough sila, no? they're having difficulty breathing, but when you assess them, the difficulty of breathing is just because they are anxious na baka COVID yung sakit nila. Tapos nagka-cough sila when you further investigate or you ask them kung ano yung dahilan ng cough nila, malalaman mo, mahilig pala magkape na walang laman ng sigmura. So, nag hyper na pala causing the cough. So, dito po mapasok ngayon yung um, uh, na sana bago ma, yun nga, matag yung isang patient na baka COVID ka, talagang maging open yung pasyente kapag tinanong ng doktor. No, kasi talaga nauunahan naman kasi talaga ng takot. Kahit naman ako lately, nag-hyperacidity, tapos inuubo ko, sabi ko, hala, may COVID ba ako? Kasi lagi akong bumibisita sa pasyente. Sabi ko, nalusutan ba ako? Sabi ko, gano'n. 
So, ikaw din mismo, you really have to help your patient uh, track back kung ano ba yung mga ginagawa nila kung, or saan sila napunta para malaman natin kung COVID or hindi. Particular evidence that it is a COVID, the RT-PCR. That's the best thing that we have right now. Um, kasi yun nga gaya dun sa tatlo nating um, case definition, uh, kahit na positive na for RT-PCR kung hindi naman galing sa um, accredited, uh, DOH accredited laboratory, still suspected ka pa rin or probable ka pa rin. So the RT-PCR from a reputable or accredited um, institution is the way to go para ma-confirm siya. Ano ang insight ko regarding two of? <laughs> okay. Binasa ko na ha. So for Sir Ed, uh, so ito controversial din to. So gaya nga doon sa nauna nating discussion, no, yung sa first few slides, um, systemic ang viral infection, kahit anong viral infection niya, systemic. Kaya supportive management tayo. Uh, ang two of kasi is steam inhalation so that it could... Um, uh, moisten yung uh, nasal and uh, nasopharyngeal passageway mo para mabawasan yung dryness so that kung, kung hirap kang huminga, ubo ka ng ubo, that would be addressed by the moisture. So, ang, ang, ang problema lang kasi ngayon is masyado nang mixed yung knowledge about tuob na it will kill the virus, it will um, cure you of the uh, infection kapag nagtuob ka para medyo indirect siya na kiniklaim for tuob. So, ganito kasi yan. Basically, ang isang tao na kahit anong infection yan, viral man or bacterial, um, inuubo tayo, di ba? So, yung ubo is a way of your body to expel whatever foreign body you have dun sa respiratory system mo. Diba nabanggit ko kanina yung cilia, yung mga yan, yung mga phlegm. Yung phlegm kasi parang yun na yung mga debris from your immune response na nag-envelope ng mga napatay nilang bacteria or viruses. Tapos i-magroll yan dun sa cilia, ilalabas yan. Kaya ka nagka-cough para mailabas mo yung phlegma. No? So that is the natural way of your body para... Uh, mailabas yung lahat ng infection. Nilalagnat tayo, di ba? Yung lagnat, hindi siya masama. Actually, it's helpful. So, yung lagnat is the way of your body para pag na-increase yung body temperature, madidisintegrate yung um, bacteria or yung virus sa loob ng katawan. Madidenature yung mga proteins ng mga bacteria mo tsaka ng virus. So, mapamatay sila. So, ano ba yung naging behavior ng mga tao ngayon? Pag nilagnat, umiinom ng paracetamol para mawala yung lagnat. Anong nangyayari? Tumatagal yung um, infectious uh, phase nila kasi pinataas ng katawan mo yung um, temperature para mapatay lahat ng bacteria or in yung virus, binababa mo. So, hindi natutulungan yung katawan to fight uh, in a natural way yung dapat nang i-fight. Tapos minsan, di ba, in uubo tayo, anong ginagawa ng iba, umiinom ng uh, anti-tusives, yung, yung para mabawasan yung pag-ubo. So, kasi nakakahiya, di ba, kung talagang grabe yung ubo mo. At times, that's helpful para makahinga ka ng maayos. But uh, most of the time, if you will really just observe the proper cough etiquette, you use your, you wear your mask and you cough through it, or you use a uh, clean tissue, you cough, you cough through it, para tapod mo agad or you cough through your elbow is it's, it's your is your body's natural way of expelling the bacteria and the virus so makikita natin napaka wise ng katawan so for the two of it's just one of the helpful um supportive management but it does not um, address or kill the bacteria. Yung manner na inuubo na tayo, it is not because mayroong nakadikit sa lalamunan natin na virus na kumikilit eh. but it's because inflamed na yung lalamunan natin kaya makate, masakit, no? It's because the immune response is already acting doon sa area na yon sa may nasopharynx natin, kaya masakit na siya. So, with or without two of, no, na, gagaling ka rin naman. 
Pero may iba kasi mas lumuluwag yung paghinga kapag uh, nagtutuob kasi nabamoisen yung ating uh, respiratory tract. Okay, so next question. I think this one is not a question. Yung kay si Dakil po, is it advisable to wear face mask when driving a car? And would it affect the driver's instinct when deciding uh, his his driving judgment? Okay. Ito rin, medyo problematic tayo dyan. However, in-impose kasi ng government that even if you are inside your car, you have to wear your mask. So... Wearing your mask inside a car, kung wala kang kasaba, dapat okay lang kasi ikaw lang mag-isa. Um, but if you have other people with you na hindi mo kasama sa bahay, sinabay mo lang, both of you should wear your mask. But what is more important is, what kind of mask are you wearing inside your car? Okay. Um, let's consider our car as a very clean environment. Okay. Kasi ikaw, as a, as a person, you keep it clean para pagpasok mo, uh, paglabas mo ng kotse mo, hindi ka makakakontaminate sa family mo or co-worker. So for example, lumabas ka ng kotse mo, nakamask ka na, syempre na-expose ka na agad niya. The moment you step out of your car, na-expose ka na sa hangin, sa environment mo, tapos hindi mo alam kung sino yung mga nakahalubilo mo. So technically speaking, your mask at that time, na babalik na sa kotse mo, is considered dirty. So when you get inside the car, before you turn on your aircon, hopefully you could remove your mask safely and then you throw it, uh, you put it in a plastic bag and you wear another mask that is meant just for your car. Bakit? Kasi kapag nagbukas ka ng aircon, yung mga nakadikit doon na particles could still be, alam mo yun, ma-recirculate lang din inside your car. So makakontaminate mo din yung kotse. So, basically, itong law na to na inaga medyo, medyo masakit siya sa ulo. Pero parang, bi, parang inano rin nila yan na medyo binawi nila na parang kung bababa lang daw yung window, saka kailangan mo suot ng mask. Pero for the peace of mind nila para hindi tayo mahuli, you wear your mask, pero the mask that is intended just for car use. Yun na lang po para sa akin. Ayan, Doc, naka-relate din po ako dyan. Good question po yan from Sir Sid Dakil. Uh, it's the last one so far. Uh, thank you po again. Ang dami po namin napulot. Meron pa po ito. May isa pa? From vitamin C and vitamin C. Bulawan po. Mm-hmm. Yes. For the vitamin C and vitamin D, yes, oo. Go ako para dyan. Pero you have to be careful on the amount of vitamin C and vitamin D that you take in. For vitamin C, since this one is water-soluble naman, ibig sabihin, kapag uminom ka ng madaming vitamin C sa katawan, um, kapag naiihi ka na, ilalabas mo rin yung excess na hindi nagamit na vitamin C. So for me, what I advise my patients, no, um, kung gusto talaga nila na mag Uh, uminom ng two capsules, for example, ng vitamin C a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, para hindi mo rin i-waste yung excess vitamin C na hindi din nagamit. But for vitamin D, meron talagang dosage yan. So one capsule a day lang yan. But you really still need to get your uh, sunlight sana. Uh, doon sa may bintana man lang, no? Tapos you drink um, also your kung, kung hindi ka pa lactose intolerant, drink your milk, eat also seafoods, mga ganyan, no, healthy diet. But at the same time, actually, for vitamin D and for bone integrity and muscle integrity, uh, exercise, frequent movement, loading of your bones, yun yung napapastrengthen ng ating buto. So kung ikaw naman ay healthy individual, no, naglalakad-lakad, wala uh, tawag dito, hindi pa naman uh, way past yung old age, mas i- tas limited ang budget mo, mas i-allow po na mag-vitamin D yung mga osteoporotic na natin ng mga kamag-anak. Yung mga na, nasa advanced age group na talaga. Kasi mas kailangan nila. Yan is kung talagang yung budget natin is limited na. 
Okay, thanks again, Doc. Meron pa pong isa from Eli Yusof. I just saw some in infographic regarding on the level of protection of different masks and the cloth masks have 0% zero zero. protection. Bakit po yes. inirecommenda pa ang cloth masks if the level of protection is zero? Okay. So, with a cloth mask na 0%, no, it depends kasi kung gaano kakapal yung cloth mask. So, basically, ako, when I inform my patients, kung magka-cloth mask sila, at least meron din silang surgical mask pa rin sa loob. Um, tawag dito. Pero yun na sinasabi nila, no, uh, cloth mask is still better than no mask at all. Uh, kasi at least kung maubo ka with your cloth mask, hindi naman lahat ng particles lalabas sa'yo. But the problem is that the microparticles nga nalalabas. So also, wala rin siya kasing filtration capacity. So yung i-inhale mo, ganun din. Pero at least lesser na badumi or less polluted. But um, yun nga eh, uh, if you will still use your cloth mask, hopefully it would be, um, what to call this one, at least uh, three ply thick, or if you can still afford mag surgical mask, and then just to keep it clean sa labas, you still wear your um, cloth mask. So technically, magastos talaga yung panahon natin ngayon. Eh. Uh, mahal kasi ang mga surgical masks ngayon. No? So uh, minsan, nagre-reuse yung ibang patient. Uh, it's safe to reuse if you know how to decontaminate. Yung iba, bumibili ng UV, UV light to decontaminate, but you can only use it for, re reuse it for a certain amount of time. So, there are so many thoughts, a school of thoughts for reusing also of the surgical mask. Uh, but yeah, make your um, cloth mask na makapal. May iba kasi manipis lang eh. Last one so far po, wala na pong kasunod. All thanks na po from Noel Bulawan, from Ma'am Sid Dakil. <laughs> Any other questions po? If I may just add, I've read from one um, article, no, if, di ba, kung wala kang UVC to decontaminate your, your mask and 95 or surgical mask, you can use naman your oven to, what to call this one, to decontaminate your mask. You put it there for about 30 minutes at 75 degrees. So basically, the, the increased heat will somehow um, disintegrate the virus. So hopefully, hindi na to maas yung cases natin because my friends in the in, in, in PGH and in other big hospitals are really just so tired and they're afraid also of contacting uh, contracting the disease. So hopefully we all do our share. Um, if you find this um, talk helpful, hopefully you can share this also with other people so that uh, wala nang magkasakit kasi sa totoo lang, napakamahal. <laughs> Ako yung nahihirapan for my patients na kailangan magpa-hospital. Nobody is prepared for this pandemic. Much more nobody is prepared um, for an additional expense kapag nagkasakit ka, whatever the disease may be. So hopefully all will be safe. Just go out if it's really, really, really necessary. And one thing, uh, di ba meron nagsasabi kasi na uh, as much as possible, don't uh, put masks for kids. Um, kasi in the first place, hindi naman sila dapat lumalabas. No? Uh, we ask the uh, hindi tayo nagpapawear ng mask sa kids if the kid um, hindi marunong magtanggal ng mask nila kapag nagkakaroon na sila ng problema. So for example, mga babies, diba minsan may makita kayo mga babies dati sa TV na nilalagyan nila ng mask or ng cover kasi newborn na pinanganak tas baka mahawaan ng COVID. So that is somehow nakakatakot. Kasi the, the newborn or the infant or the one-year-old does not know how to remove the mask safely. So, kung masuffocate sila, kung ano man ang mangyari, no? although hindi naman dapat nakasuffocate, kung ano man yung maging discomfort nila, hindi nila masasabi sa iyo. So, hindi mo sila mamamonitor. So, ang ano lang doon is, kids should not be going out. So, dapat, kung hindi sila lalabas, there is no question na dapat kung magmamask o hindi. 
limit pa rin natin yung mga mag-visit sa bahay natin. Kasi most of the time, no, yung mga rates ng infection natin are not because they went to a high co uh, to a covid center but it's because um, they lost their guard kasi bumisita yung tita yung tito para nahihiya tayo magsaway na magwear sila ng mask no hindi mo naman alam kung saan nagpunta yung mga kamag-anak mo or yung mga kaibigan mo for the longest time so you are not sure of their health history as of that moment so yung mga times na nakikumain tayo, uh, close contact with us on the same table with our friends, the first time ulit natin makita during the pandemic, uh, that poses a, a risk for us to get the disease. So, nakaka-ano man sa mental health natin, but we just have to really make sure na we stay protected. So, keep our guards on high at all times. So, Ay, Doc, meron pa pong pahabol na isa? Uh, from okay. Nins Johan. Hi, Doc. What is the difference between vitamins and food supplement? Alin po mas okay, vitamins or food supplement to boost immune system? Okay. For this one, I'm not really an advocate of um, healthy individuals drinking vitamins and food supplements and minerals. Bakit? Because uh, a healthy individual is able to eat naman. Walang problema sa pagkain. It just so happened that we take vitamins and minerals and food supplements kasi hindi readily available. So pag vitamins, so yun yung mga vitamins, A, B, C, lahat. Ano. Yung food supplement, ano nga ba yun? Yung iba mga additives. So papasok na rin doon yung mga minerals mo, yung mga ganun. But basically, they're artificial na lang din kasi. Or for example, yung mga post-stroke patients natin na hindi pa kayang kumain, tapos kakain na sila through a tube, passing through their nose, we supply Supplement their feeding by providing them with uh, milk na highly nutritious, yung mga brands na kilala natin. Ano? So those are the food supplements na pinoprovide natin kasi yung one glass of that milk is uh, packed already with all the vitamins and minerals that they need. So if, if kaya natin to eat variety of food per meal, much better. So we mas mas gugustuhin namin na mag-invest kayo with a proper diet, uh, proper food na na-prepare ninyo kaysa yung uh, vitamins or artificial na mga preparations. Kasi if uh, minsan kasi nagme-mega dose yung ibang tao and uh, what happens is that uh, the kidney suffers. So there are those who take so much vitamins, so much food supplements, so much minerals. Later on, nagugulat but kailangan ng kidney transplant. Bakit uh, nakaroon ng kung ano ano klase ng sakit? So um, if not needed, uh, as much as possible, eat natural na lang. So may jana pa branch out na tayo. <laughs> okay. I think that's it for now. Okay na po. Yes. Thank you po ulit, Doktora. Uh, thank you, thank you po. po. Thank you din, Ma'am Lady Chris. So, before we end, uh, ang ating buting principal ay may sasabihin po kay Doktora, Sir Amor P. Dugay po. Okay, good afternoon once again. Um, in behalf of Manila High School family, I would like to express my heartfelt, heartfelt gratitude to Doktora Creza Ligaya for enlightening us between facts and opinions on this COVID-19 or coronavirus disease. Indeed, it, uh, we had a very informative and very engaging discussions to keep us safe and win this battle. Once again, thank you so much, Doctora, and uh, good afternoon. Keep safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm. Wait, ma'am. Hey, Doctor. So, Hi, may sorry, hindi ba ba? Si Sir lang pala nagbabay. Meron ko task na po for our closing program. So, our program Hello. Task, Hello, Doctora. Hello, uh, Pag-a-Wedang Hapan, ma'am. The Manila High School family is indeed very grateful for having with us Dr. Creza Ligaya as our resource speaker. Truly, the information shared to us is really that important since we need to protect ourselves from this unseen enemy anytime, anywhere. This pandemic is no joke. 
we, sh we, we need to do the habit of keeping ourselves. Yes. Po, nag fluctuate po ang internet ni ma'am. <laughs> Na-mute po si ma'am. Balik. Ma'am, pa-unmute, ma'am. Ma'am, pa-asko, pa-unmute po. Yan. Okay na po, ma'am. Again, thank you, Doctora, for your time. Thank you, participants, teachers, parents, and students. Salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat po. So, congratulations. Congratulations to everyone, especially the Brigade Escuela people. Thank you, Dr. Olet. <coughs> Thank you, Pa. Thank you, Pa. Thank you, Sir Raymart. Thank you, po, Sir. Thank you, Sir Noel Bulawan, sa pag-attend po sa seminar namin. Thank you, Sir. Sino si Sir? Sino si Sir <laughs> Noel? Ay, ano po yan, na-invite po natin from sa ibang school. Sige po. Thank you, po. Add na po natin yung stream. Thank you, po. Thank you.